We know that despotic forms of government dismiss the significance and value of individual human lives. Today, we'll explore some implications of a government's dismissal of the right to life. Brian Johnston is the Western Director of the National Right to Life Committee. He has served in many capacities while advocating for innocent lives. As California Commissioner on Aging, as Chairman of the California Pro-Life Council, on the board of the National Legal Center for the Medically Dependent and Disabled. And now here's our host, Brian Johnston. Welcome back to Life Matters. We're your program on the right to life, on the actual principles of the right to life and how they're carried out in day-to-day life. You know, the right to life is actually a very important political and philosophical statement that America's founders insisted had to be a foundational premise of the American founding. It is the first of the inalienable rights, the self-evident truths, the inalienable rights that are given not by government, they're given by God. And it's the duty of any just government to ensure and protect those rights, but in particular, the right of the innocent person to be alive. That's granted by God, and those who take away that life have done something very unjust. And a just government must ensure that the innocent, vulnerable human being is protected under the law. That's what the right to life is about, and that's why abortion is something that is definitely a violation of the right to life. That's when you are most vulnerable as a human being, and we all know that those are human babies that are killed in abortion. So, lots to talk about today. This is a special program, and we're going to focus on California today, and in particular on the California gubernatorial recall election. Now, if you're listening out of state, Many of you do listen out of state, or if you're listening internationally, we're heard around the world, and of course, we're heard on podcast. But we're focusing right now, particularly if you're listening in California, on something that's very, very relevant to you. But you other listeners, it's also relevant to you. Because as we describe what Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, what he's done just on the right to life issue, it's very important for you to realize It's what all progressive ideology does regarding the right to life. Now, if you've listened to our program before, or if you haven't, you can go back in our podcasts. We examine what the right to life is and what historically political progressivism is. It's a very important distinction. It is not the same as liberalism. Progressivism is a very specific idea and view of government that says that progress must be made, there must be change in a particular direction, and then they make up the direction it should go. Very dangerous idea, but they want to change things and use the government to do that. Gavin Newsom is a political progressive. The Democrat Party of the United States is a politically, quote, progressive party, and all socialist political worldviews, whether it be international socialism or national socialism, these are progressive ideologies. And again, if you look up the actual meaning of progressivism and where it's going and how it wants to use government, you can see just how dangerous it is. Now, some people may say, well, I just don't like abortion, but there's more to the right to life. As we said at the top of the program, no, it's a very specific and political principle that when it's violated, things get real messy real quick. Killing for social reasons becomes an important predicate. And that's what happens in international socialism, that's communism, in national socialism, also known as Nazism, and it has other forms, by the way, other forms of fascism, is progressivism that focuses not on the world dominance, but a particular national dominance. But in all of these worldviews, they're progressing away from key values. And the most important value when it comes to what's important in life and government is that innocent lives are protected. We're going to talk about Gavin Newsom now. I'm going to spend some time talking about him and the fact that he's being recalled. We'll talk about how the recall election works, and we're going to talk about some of the candidates that want to replace him. There are 42 candidates that have made the cut, and they're going to be on the ballot. The first question on the ballot is, should Gavin Newsom be replaced? And you're going to see, if you're pro-life, why that needs to happen. We'll leave it to you to decide. But I'm going to give you some startling facts that the common major media refuses to discuss. So we're going to talk about the need to vote yes on question one, 
once there is an affirmative, more than half of the voters have said, yes, replace Gavin Newsom. The second question is, who should replace him? As I said, there's 42 people that want to be part of that. At least 16 of them are pro-life individuals, and we're going to talk about them. So this is an important program. I want you prepared for this. Again, you'll also be able to get this by podcast and share it with others. But you need to know the real facts, what the media does not tell you about the right to life. You already know that the media is not shooting straight about what the right to life is. They're not dealing with the facts of abortion either. If you aren't familiar with it, you should look into my new book, Evil Twins, Roe and Doe, How the Supreme Court Unleashed Medical Killing. And in this new book, I examine what the media has intentionally distorted. The media has distorted the abortion issue. The media has distorted what Roe v. Wade actually does. Hey, try this. I've tried it with my friends. You try it with yours. Ask your friends. What does Roe v. Wade actually do? Do you know you're going to get many different answers, even from ardently pro-life people, even from ardently pro-choice people? There's nothing but confusion regarding Roe v. Wade because the media has intentionally confused and obfuscated what Roe v. Wade did. That's why I wrote my book, Evil Twins, Roe and Doe, How the Supreme Court Unleashed Medical Killing, and that's available anywhere good books are sold. So when we come back, obviously, we're going to talk about the policies of medical killing, which is now rampant everywhere, but particularly for human babies because of Roe and Doe. But now it's spread. And in particular, there's political leaders that promote it. They promote the use of medicine to kill for social reasons. That should catch your ear because right now we're involved in a worldwide medical emergency and governments now need to tell people what to do. Governments are going to direct medicine to do certain things. Governments are going to get your consent. Maybe it's implied consent. Maybe it's engineered consent. Perhaps it's enforced consent. But you need to know this, that medicine was changed through the Roe and Doe decisions. The Hippocratic Oath is no longer in effect for medicine. It's something that individual doctors might choose to follow. But then it's just personal. So there's very good reason for you to be concerned about the practice of medicine right now. But most importantly, we're talking about politics here in California and the politics that reverberate nation and worldwide right now when it comes to protecting innocent lives. So when we come back, we're going to delve in deeply into who Gavin Newsom is in terms of his policies that he's implemented here in California. And then we're going to talk about the folks that want to replace him. You're listening to Life Matters. Life Matters continues after this. They say sunlight is the best disinfectant. Did you know that California has a law in the books that says you need to protect babies born alive in the course of an abortion? But that law is simply ignored. The current legislature and Governor Newsom's administration support all abortions all the time. And they simply do not examine or regulate the practice, even though our tax dollars pay for it. We need to shine a light on this cover-up of the abortion industry in our state. Go to CaliforniaProLife.org and click on the Light of Day Project. We need the facts about late-term abortion to be examined and made known. We need the government doing its job to protect lives. We need the light of day on this. Go to CaliforniaProLife.org. And now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. Welcome back to Life Matters. As I said, we're talking about very specific public policies when it comes to human lives and specifically abortion. We're going to talk about Gavin Newsom's policies in California, but how they actually reflect where the progressive ideology itself is going. So wherever you are in the world, you need to pay attention to what's happened in California and how the media. Now, if you're in some parts of the world that can't hear this program, let's say North Korea or Iran and other parts of the world that are dystopias, the media is not going to let you hear certain things. They have a certain version of reality. But do you know in the rest of the world, the Western world also has a dystopian media that has lied to you. 
particularly on abortion. And again, I want to remind you, if you want to know about abortion law and what really happened in Roe v. Wade and Doe v. Bolton, get my book, Evil Twins, Roe and Doe, How the Supreme Court Unleashed Medical Killing. But let, let's take a look right now at the aspect of abortion in California and what Gavin Newsom's done about it. Very few people realize that abortion throughout pregnancy has been legalized and is supported by Gavin Newsom and that your tax money in California goes to support not just the abortion throughout pregnancy, but not just to the guy with the blood on his gloves or the woman. There's women abortionists, as you know. But actually, the tax money is going to the whole industry, to what's known as the catchment system. In order to do abortions, you need pregnant women, pregnant girls. And to do that, you've got to advertise. You've got to market to them. Your tax money in California pays for all of that. Thanks to Gavin Newsom, he's promoting it even further. So you need to know that these abortions are not just for the hard cases. And specifically, because of Roe and Doe, and most pointedly here in California because of abortion advocates and our legislature and Gavin Newsom, there is no need for any medical problem. Throughout pregnancy, the abortionist can kill that child for any social reason or no reason in particular. So it's not about the hard cases. The child can be perfectly healthy, the mother perfectly healthy. It can be in the eighth month, and that child can be killed. I like what Justice Byron White actually said about Roe decision. He said, this authorizes abortions for any social reason or no reason in particular. Now, again, the popular media doesn't tell you that. They don't want to tell you that. But that's the reality. That's paid for in California. And he made, again, a public statement on May 31st, 2019, inviting women throughout the nation and, by extension, the world to come to California for their abortions because they're free and at any time and for any reason or no reason in particular. Secondly, about Gavin Newsom, you probably don't know this, but California law has on its books the Born Alive Infant Protection Act. That's right. There are late-term abortions done, and sometimes they're botched, and the child is born alive. According to California Code, and it's in the Health Code specifically, Health and Safety Section 123435, great number to remember, that says specifically if a child is born alive in a late-term abortion, that child should be cared for, just like any other child in that circumstance. But Gavin Newsom's administration specifically has refused to enforce that Born Alive Act. So he's willing for a child that's already been born to be thrown in the trash. And there have been cases of this happening. But the popular media doesn't talk about that. They're running interference for Gavin Newsom. But there's a lot more about Gavin Newsom that the media doesn't talk about. He advocates the use of medicine to intentionally kill depressed and ill suicidal patients without their having any psychological counseling. That's right. If you've been to a nursing home, many of you know that I'm a former commissioner on aging here in California, and I was on the board of examiners of nursing home administrators. And you need to know it's not uncommon if you're old, if you're sick, if you've been given a terminal diagnosis. You're not going to be happy. That's very depressing. But what people need when they're depressed is not the encouragement, oh yeah, go kill yourself. What they actually need is just the opposite. The desire for suicide is a cry for help. And if you're in that circumstance, I promise you, you're going to be in a very difficult state. I think of, of Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, and if you know of anyone who've been suicidal or have endured a diagnosis of a terminal condition, very common to get the five stages, what Kubler-Ross talked about in her book, Death and Dying, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, deep depression. And then hopefully, finally, acceptance. What Kubler-Ross wanted people to know is that it's not uncommon to want to die and get it over with. But her goal for psychologists is to train people to confront and deal with their emotions so they can mature through that difficult time and come to acceptance. And you may know of people that have gone through that. It's not uncommon for people to go into remission when they've been in a supposedly helpless situation. What's needed if you or a loved one have a condition and it's terminal or you're in pain and it can't be relieved? The answer is simple and it's not kill the patient. Get another doctor. The resources are there for the pain management that won't put people into a stupor. They'll actually kill the pain and not the patient. 
But most importantly, the involvement emotionally with others is critical. However, Gavin Newsom, not only does he support physician-assisted suicide, and again, understand, that's medical killing, intentional medical killing, using the healing arts to intentionally kill a human being in the name of good, in the name of a social benefit, compassion, but it's killing intentionally. And up until 1973, by the way, in the United States, that was illegal everywhere. And a direct violation of the oath, the Hippocratic Oath, was Roe v. Wade and Doe v. Bolton that changed that. But back now to Gavin Newsom and assisted suicide. Not only does he support assisted suicide, he was involved in killing his own mother. And you can read more about that. There's many articles. Go ahead and Google that. National Review had a great article. Gavin Newsom helped his mother commit assisted suicide. That's in National Review. Google it. You can read about it. It's a typical assisted suicide story. The individual involved in the act, usually a family member that's alienated from the victim, doesn't get along with the victim and doesn't like visiting them. I've been to many nursing homes. A lot of those folks don't get visitors very often at all because people don't want to deal with those emotions. And Gavin Newsom admitted to being in the same boat. And yet when it was time to finish her off, when it was time to use medicine lethally, he was there and he did it. That was against the law at the time. It's been popularized now by the progressive media and the pop media, but it's incredibly dangerous. And those of you who are listening in Europe know that it's spread throughout Europe and it's an incredibly insidious use of medicine. Many people are killed that have nothing wrong with them physically, but simply because they're depressed that they're killed using lethal medicine. Incredibly important. So that's just some examples of existing law. Right now, assisted suicide is legal in California, but the pro-death folks want to expand it and take away all protections that are left. Gavin Newsom will have to decide before the recall whether or not he supports that. I already told you, we kind of know where he's coming from. He's done it. So the issue at hand, if you're pro-life, is should Gavin Newsom continue and his policies continue? I think we've given you something to think about. We're going to go into all of that and more when we come back. Life Matters continues after this. Life Matters is sponsored by the California Pro-Life Council, the state affiliate of the National Right to Life Committee. To find out more on how you can help and be involved right where you are, go to californiaprolife.org. That's californiaprolife.org. We'll tell you how you can get involved in your local community, how you can be effective if you want to be a pro-life speaker. We have training programs and open doors of opportunity for you to speak on the life issue. If you'd like to donate your car or a boat, you can do that at californiaprolife.org. Car easy makes it easy and you find that on our website we get the most of any donation program car easy allows us to get the most out of your car maybe you're not getting the trade-in value you want it maybe it's just not running the way it used to let your car be used for life go to californiaprolife.org and find out what you can do to make a difference californiaprolife.org be sure to subscribe to the life matters podcast with brian johnston go to lifematters.life to subscribe and now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. Now, for the recall, again, for Californians, the specifics, there need to be 50% plus one of all voters that vote saying, yes, get rid of Gavin Newsom. And then the second question will be, who should replace him? Now, I want to tell you something that isn't a secret, and you should think it through. It's critically important for this to be successful that the more yeses there are, the better. And so with all of these candidates, I told someone this today, I wish there were a thousand candidates because each of those candidates would bring their own friends and fans and followers to support them, but most importantly, to vote yes on the recall. And that's why it worked the last time. You know, many of you know that Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> became governor through this process and he was very well known. That helped, but there were a lot of people on the ballot. And so that's why Gray Davis was recalled, because so many people said, look, not only are we tired of Gray Davis and how he uses government or abuses government, and that's the case with, with Gavin Newsom, as I said, worse with Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom is the most radical pro-death executive in the nation, our nation, 
But I think he is more radical than any governor of California has ever had. Jerry Brown was an abortion supporter. He was nowhere nearly as radical as Gavin Newsom. So the policies do matter. By the way, there's many other policies. We're not going to get into them in our program, but there's a lot of policies of taxation, how he's dealt with COVID. That's another life-related one. Many of you know that Governor Cuomo locked people up in nursing homes that had COVID, didn't give them any treatments, and sent COVID patients into those nursing homes to spread it to that vulnerable population. You may not know because the media is covered up, that Gavin Newsom did exactly the same thing. And only the Mercury News is the only popular newspaper to have covered that. But he handled that very, very poorly. There's other policy issues he did not handle well. We're not going to get into those other policy issues. Right now, I'm going to go through the list of candidates. And I want to tell you, there's quite a few Democrats. And there's only one Democrat who actually is pro-life. And those of you who are listening at home, make sure you go to the podcast and go back and double check. But Armando, Mondo Perez Serrats is a Democrat and he's pro-life and he wants to replace. If you feel you have to vote Democrat, then Armando is committedly pro-life. On the Republican side, many of you know, some of these people are my friends, by the way. John Cox, very pro-life. Larry Elder. And the thing about Larry Elder, he's gotten a lot of attention. He's very pro-life. But he has the most attention because he has a nationwide radio show. So Larry Elder is in good standing, and he's pro-life. Right after him in in order is Kevin Faulkner, who's a Republican. And I've met some Republicans who said, well, he's got the best chance. Well, that's not really true. But the thing about Kevin Faulkner, he's pro-abortion. And he goes against the Republican Party platform. So if you're looking at Kevin Faulkner, there's a lot of money, a lot of Rolex and Rolls Roycers have thrown money at Kevin Faulkner because he's a progressive Republican. I started the program by describing you what progressivism is. Progressivism gets back to a form of government that seeks to dramatically move the culture in a different direction. And I've done programs on this. Make sure you go back and listen to some of those. But that's what Marxism is. That's what all forms of socialism is. And progressivism as a philosophy is extremely dangerous. Don't confuse it with liberalism. Liberalism Classical liberalism is about the value of each and every individual. Progressivism is not. So on that matter, Kevin Faulkner agrees with the progressives when it comes to abortion. Let's keep going. There's other pro-life candidates. Ted Gaines, who's on the board of equalization. He's the highest elected Republican in the state. Very pro-life. Sam Gallucci. He's a Republican pastor and a CEO, an interesting man. Sam Gallucci is pro-life. There's more. Kevin Kiley. I know Kevin, a great guy. He's a California legislator, very pro-life. Chauncey Slim Killens is a retired correctional officer. He's pro-life. Jenny Ray Rue, she is pro-life. Steve Chavez, he's pro-life. Diego Martinez, Republican businessman, he's pro-life. Doug Osi, who was a former congressman. Doug Osi, I know him. He's pro-life. He's become even more pro-life. I spent time with him over the years. I know Doug. He's, he's transformed his position. We take converts, by the way. It takes a while to realize that what's at stake in abortion is a human life. And that is the basis of America's freedoms, is respecting individual human lives. Another pro-lifer running to replace Gavin Newsom is Denver Stoner. He has to be Republican deputy sheriff. Joe Simon. S-Y-M-M-O-N, excuse my pronunciation, but that's Joe Simon. He also is pro-life. Anthony Tremino is an entrepreneur. He's pro-life. There's some great folks. James Hanning, pro-life. He's no party preference. Dennis Lucy is pro-life. Also, no party preference. No, the reason that's important, that's the largest growing party in California. A lot of Californians are obviously sick of the Democrat Party and then they're their policies, but they're not real happy with Republicans, particularly when they try to pretend they're Democrats. So no party preference is the single largest growing political affiliation in our state. So that's a list of some of the good candidates. And again, let me explain to you why we're not picking and choosing right now. At some point, California Pro-Life Council, our PAC board, will determine if we should make a specific endorsement. One of the reasons we're not making specific endorsements is we want everyone excited about replacing Gavin Newsom so that the 50% threshold is met. After that, you can decide who's best. I actually have a personal favorite. I'm not going to tell you right now who it is. 
because I don't want a war between those candidates. And I don't want you discouraged if, if California pro-life picks a candidate, if our PAC says, well, this is the one we want. And if you're pro-life and you then are dissuaded about your pro-life pick, we don't want you dissuaded. We want you excited about this recall election. So get involved. You're going to be hearing other opportunities to, to actually hear from. I've already recorded several interviews with some of these pro-life candidates, and that'll be available by podcast at Life Matters. So make sure you subscribe to the Life Matters podcast and get up to date on what's happening. This is very important in California. But as I said, nationwide and worldwide, this election is important. And the policies we're talking about, they're not just here in California. As you know, a lot of what happens in this state tends to influence the culture because, among other things, we have Hollywood here. And a lot of the modern dominant media is based in California and it feeds ideas to the world. You know that the theme of Life Matters is to deal with the issue of life and the right to life, which is a specific idea that needs to be honored and protected. We're in a battle of ideas. And so sometimes when the wrong ideas are put into law, they're enforced and they end up killing people. That's why the right to life has to be understood. That's why you need to understand it is an idea for the civic realm. So if you're a pro-lifer, I want to remind you, it isn't just about your feelings and how you feel about babies. I know how I feel about babies. And I know how I feel about women who feel vulnerable. I used to teach high school. I know young women that got abortions and really, really regretted it. I also know people who got abortions and, and don't regret it, sadly. But they also admit that it wasn't something they really enjoyed. But the fact is, is that there is that acknowledgement that it was a dramatic decision in their life. And there's a reason for that. And as you dig into why that was such a serious decision, and even radical feminist will say this is the most important decision. Yeah, sure is. You're ending the life of a vulnerable human being. And so if you want to know more about that, again, if you want to see my book, it's available everywhere. Fine books are sold. Amazon is the quickest, easiest. But it's called Evil Twins, Roe and Doe. How the Supreme Court Unleashed Medical Killing, it'll help you understand the Roe versus Wade decision and why you've been lied to about it and what you can do about it. And I want to remind you too, it's about ideas and policies, and ultimately, it is about politics. So thanks for listening to Life Matters, and wherever you are, make sure that you're involved in speaking up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Learn more about everything in today's show online at lifematters.life, where you'll find all the resources you need to protect life. Life Matters is a production of the California Pro-Life Council, the state affiliate of National Right to Life.